Hi, I'm Robbie. And I'm Rick. And, and this, this is Living Wild. Wild. Hello. Hi. And welcome to part two of our Burrowing Owl edition of Living Wild. Wild. Well, as you guys may remember, we weren't having much luck finding these burrowing owls. In part one. So we went out to find more about these guys. We went to the Living Coast Discovery Center in Chula Vista. In the middle of a marsh. marsh. Well, we're still not having much luck finding these burrowing owls. So what we decided to do is to find some more experts. First one we're going to talk to is Dr. Phil Unit, who's a curator of ornithology at the San Diego Natural History Museum. Birds and mammals. Okay, so Robbie, take a look at our uh, collection of burrowing owls. Roll this uh, set of cases back here. Collections like this are the ground floor of biology. You'll notice that each specimen has a label uh, with the date and location uh, where it was found, so it's an irreplaceable historical document uh, that may take us to a time uh, to which we can no longer return. 1924. Oh. Here's a baby chick, 1885. All your guides to bird identification were written by biologists and illustrated by artists working with uh, collections just like these. So the skeletons are an important component of our uh, collection as well. So Robbie, I don't know if you're bothered by the fact that we're stuffed burrowing owls in drawers you could pull out, but they're for science, so that's the main thing to consider. I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, they had like these stuffed burrowing owls that appear to be stuffed with like cotton in these drawers. I mean, do you think that they're like baby safe? I mean, I can send a stuffed burrowing owl to my baby cousin Max. <laughs> they're not toys for your baby cousin Max. They're scientific specimens that are important for research, so that's, we'll just leave it there. All right, so the next person we're going to talk to is Nancy Connie. She's a wonderful woman out at Sky Hunters. It's a rehabilitation center that takes care of injured birds, and they do have a wonderful little burrowing owl. My vet called me and said, I've got a little burrowing owl here that was illegally raised. Wasn't raised with his mom or dad. Didn't learn how to hunt. Kind of like my red-tailed hawk. When we get a baby in, camouflage, puppet. Once they can pick up food on their own, they go in with others of their own species, get some good flight catch some live little things and back out and away the while they go. Now, we used to have lots of different places where you could go and see burrowing owls because we had more wide open spaces. Now, we've done so much building with schools and theaters and places for people to go shop. We've taken over their habitat. We need to take a stand and make sure that there's areas for our habitat. Animals in that habitat can survive. Otherwise, we're not gonna have them. Your kids down the road are not going to be able to see these if we don't take a stand. So I know that great horned owls and burrowing owls are both owls. Right. So how are they similar and different? Well, the great horned owl is strictly nocturnal. You don't usually see them out during the day. You can occasionally if you're hiking and you spook one, it can fly. But they don't usually take off and go hunting till it's dark. Where the little burrowing owl is nocturnal as well as diurnal. So you do get to see them during the day. These guys We'll borrow a nest from a hawk or a raven because they nest early in January and February. Where the burrowing owl uses a cavity or a squirrel hole that's already established. Owls are completely different than our hawks, eagles, and falcons. Owls don't hunt by their eyes, they hunt by their hearing. And they have asymmetrical ears, one high and one low. So when it's dark, if they hear something moving, they center their head and go for it. And their head does not go all the way around like a lot of people think. It would come off. So, we still need to find some wild burrowing owls. Yeah, so we're going to look at two locations. One's a restored area that has some uh, artificial burrows, and we're hoping to find some owls that have actually occupied those burrows. And the second place is an agricultural area, which we think is the last stronghold for the burrowing owl in Southern California. So in the meantime, don't forget to live, live wild, wild with Living, living Wild. wild. Get him going. Their natural habitat. What is that over there? 
is that? He's our resident chaparral canine. He's leaving us. There's only us. Listen up a little bit. Come on, there you go. Hello! There you go. That's what people want to see. 